Well, um, today we're going to paint a really simple um, cottage scene. Um, and I'm just going to put some outlines of here. These are not written in stone. This is just something that we can change. We'll be able to rub this out because it's a very soft brush. It's a, it's a 2B. So we should be able to rub that out from the, um, once we've done the, the painting. So we're just going to put a tree area there and a thatched cottage here. It's going to be very chocolate boxy. Um, nice and simple, but I'm just going to show a very simple way of painting a nice pretty scene of uh, a couple of trees, a bit of a background and a few houses and it's as simple as that something nice and easy peasy lemon squeezy right these are just bits of information there right so firstly a great way of doing a background is to just wet that top area there and we don't have to be too uh, mad on loads of colour just a touch of uh, the Prussian blue bump there a little bit of the Opera Rose bump there and you can actually use a handkerchief just to create some clouds as they're falling downwards to the foreground. So that's a really easy way of, of making some clouds. And if you want to ex ex um, express those cl clouds a little bit more, tip your paper up. And what will happen, all that pigment will gather at the top of your clouds. And if it isn't gathering um, as much as you like, just make a little mixture, a stronger mixture of that and just drop it in certain parts, different parts, and let it run along. Okay. Let it run along there, follow it along and just dance it up to the edge. It won't go any further because it's dry at those areas so we're just going to add those little extras and we can, if we want to, we can just drop a little bit of water in there with a bit more blue in there. I'll keep this tipped to this angle. I can make those clouds very dramatic this way. And if they're looking like they're a, bit, a little bit uniform, just take some of those out. Let that run along. And keep it Keep it upright like that until it's dried. Otherwise you'll get cauliflowers. You don't want cauliflowers. So now I'm gonna just some of this some of this um, is creating little beads there. So I'm gonna make me brush thirsty by just freezing it with a bit of a handkerchief and just let it drink up some of those puddles. Let him have a little drink of those puddles, keep them a thirsty brush don't go thirsty give it a wash and just with a dry handkerchief just rinse him out and he'll be thirsty again there we go, nice and easy peasy and that should dry nicely now nice dramatic sky uh, with those clouds let those 
dry before you tackle your trees because you don't want those to accidentally rub into them. So we'll come back in a minute. Right, we are now going to have a go at the trees. First of all, I want to put a base green layer. It doesn't... Um, it's not very important. I'm using a bit of green gold here. I'm going to try and... And I'm just going to use the side of the brush. It's not that... We're not making masterpiece here. Look okay, at this stage. And down there, it's just to give it a bit of an underpainting really, that's all we're doing. Giving this green an underpainting. And we'll move down here with the green. And down there with the green. It's very scrubby, we've done that. And we'll do the same with that one. Nothing really exciting, you're not learning. I you know, see he's not teaching me much here. And it's easy peasy that. Well, it's all about the brushes. And if you can hunt out in your old brush box and you might have some rubbish brushes like a flat brush like this. This was initially it was it was I think it was designed for acrylics. And it's just one of those cheap ones that you get from Hobbycraft. You know, they're not great. They come in a big bundle. And the cheapest chips. And the ends go really jagged if you don't really look after them. And the same with this one there. That's another one from there. That's a daily round with this one. It's a three quarter flat. But I've really, I've not really took much care of this. So... Rather than throw them away, I stick them in my in my rubbish brush box, uh, and it's always a good thing to to have, because you can um, you can create your own brushes by doing that. Doing that. So first of all, let's gonna get let's get a bit of green here. Uh, this is a bit of green gold on there, and we'll hit it with a bit of. Uh, sap green and what I'm doing is I'm pushing down on on my brush there to break those edges okay and when I think those edges are a bit broken and damaged enough then I can just with the edge the tip in fact that's probably a bit too big this brush but let's use this smaller brush and let's do the same with that so we're just gonna little bit more a bit more green there so just tap it in there and we're just gonna lightly dab this brush onto our big old green tree. And this is going to create an effect of lots of loose leaves. Just dab it a little bit and put your foot your finger down there if you want just to to control how far this is going down. And as you're moving around just turn the brush from side to side to create a random effect just like random branches okay next we can put our trunk in and it's a combination of laying branches in and lifting out branches as well. So I've not put a brown trunk, it's just a little bit of olive green and we're gonna just put little areas in. 
because some areas could have been um, hidden by the by the the leaves and the trees. Same with this now, this side. Let those dry a minute. Right, now we're going to create a darker green. And I've used some of this green appetite and a bit of this. Uh, it is actually, it's actually, it's not um, sap green, it is the Englais Claire Thalo Green, green light. So we're just going to put different. So a little a couple of shadows now underneath these branches and these these areas here. And let's let's move on this side first. And bring this colour down into your the trunk of your tree as well. Just to create a bit of a more 3D effect with those greens. Little well, shadows underneath the, the leaves that are drooping down. Just explaining those shadows, explaining the droopiness of the tr of those leaves with shadows underneath them. There we go. I don't think it needs more more than that. Now the same with the other side. So. Right here and just where little areas of you can see the, the tree trunk. And I'm going to just try something. I've got a nice flat brush here. And we could get some flat areas of paint and just all around this area create some other branches so they're hanging down these branches there we go 
great big groupy branches coming down there. Just going over the front of the that trunk. There's a couple of places there. Just to break up really. I think the trees are okay there. So the next thing is to do the cottage roof. Now we're gonna make this a lovely warm colour. So we're starting off with a bit this is uh this has had some really just dark colours on there, some browns and I'm going to add a little bit of opera rose or rose opera on there with a bit of the orange. Let's see what work that makes. Now I think we're going to need a little bit of yellow. That's probably better isn't it? The sun's coming from this side, so we'll just wet that side there and bring that there so it just runs into it. There we go. I'm just going to run that over there. Just a wet area here. Let's fetch the colour from this angle. Fetching that colour over from there. And we're letting the painting do the work for us, really. Uh, a bit more orange, a bit orangey there. I'll just go along the bottom there and let that feed into each other. Just mixing very ever so gently on the page. Now this bush here we can do the same with it. Right, and we'll leave that to dry for a second, all right. Back to it, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the chimney pots on here. So I'm using a, a dark area, and I'm going to bring up a little me burnt, the quinacidrone burnt orange, and just this area here. A bit of blue on there, a little bit of red, upper rose, just for the top part there. Put a couple of little chimney pots there. But we've not used black, don't really like to use black. this burnt orange and just over there just borrowing a little bit of that colour and fetching it down. Now this is the darkest part so we're going to keep on with this burnt orange theme down there. And there we go. 
well for a clean brush I'm going to just wet some of this pigment just dragging some of this pigment along the roof it's going to indicate like straw and thatch not too much just a little bit there to quite wet that area it's okay so I'm going to make this a little bit neater this orange and this area down the bottom and just a fairly clean brush just of colour and tone in there. Let's leave that to dry for a bit. Now underneath our shadows are going to be a, like a bluey colour so the base colour is going to be this um, phthalo blue and we can put a little bit of this cobalt in there I think just to lighten it up a little bit. on the brush and let's have a look we'll do a tester that looks okay that's a good shadow colour it's a good shadow colour right and just underneath those eaves and now I'm not going to soften this bottom line because I want it to look like the sun is stronger there. So if we keep it like that, it will seem like the sun is casting a quite a harsh shadow on there. And it will only cast a harsh shadow if it is a very strong sunny day. Fetching those over here. And we'll let that dry while we do the grass. First of all, we're going to get a nice colour, base colour grass, all the way over there. That's a bit of green gold. And make it wetter here and drier there. And it'll closer to the sun has just give us a couple of highlights we might be able to save those but it don't matter because we're going to go over there in a bit but while we do that until we do that let's get this bus sorted out so i'm going to get a bit more green on there and just create some bushy effect here there you go and it's nice and simple nothing too complicated and as that's drying let's get a darker colour and just tap that in there the darker colour of this part you can see it's starting to run into there, but it's not a problem. It's not a problem. That's what watercolour is all about. Creating little mistakes that you're happy with. Now, I'm just going to put a little back to that there. So, we've got a little... Some hills at the back there. And you can live with that. Let's let that dry first. Right, now's the time to show that we've got a bit of grass here. So I'm going to use um, a smaller flat brush. It's quite a nice flat brush. It's not a ruined one. So I'm going to use that just for the back. 
the smaller lines at the back, bigger lines at the front. So we'll just put a couple of little divots on there. Right, now a little bit bigger and we'll use a, a little rougher brush one and we'll go a little closer huh? Let's just dab along there. Just touching the edges. And let's get a bigger brush now because we're a bit lazy and we want to do this, get this grass done, bash it down, break the edges. See, you don't need expensive brushes for things like this, just your old ones. And as we get closer, let's make these grass divots a little bit bigger yeah, and make them a little bit darker. Let's add a bit of this colour in here. Get the red there as well. Bash it in there and let's just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit darker, coming to the front. Go. Let's put a couple of darker bits around here, just with the corner of this brush. Just with the corner, just dabbing underneath and at the back. Now we want a quite a fine brush to put our windows in, so I'm just going some of this cool colour here. It's a mixture of all these bits of cool colours we've used. We've used some phthalo blue, we've used a bit of this rose opera. And uh, where's that phthalo blue? Let's get that in there. Oh, we've got a bit of green in there. So, lately. so let's have a look at what we can do here. Let's put a, a simple window there. We'll put a simple window. It's got two window panes on that one. There you go. Now, just around there. I'm going to have a window on this top there, an attic window, so people can have a look out. And Let's get the door in. There we go. Let's have a door here as well, don't we? Otherwise, it could be locked in. Now then, let's gonna get some really deep shadows. 
just to finish this off under there under there and a little bit there let's create a bit of shadow for these um, these trees so I'm using that big flat brush and I want it flat because it's going to be more or less a straight line Just creating a few shadows. Uh -huh there. And we can even put a little fence just by dabbing the, the flat brush over there. Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom. There you go, and that's nice and simple. So we've got a simple watercolour scene using cheap ordinary brushes and it's, um, it's quite effective. So thank you for watching.